I'm a coder. If I can build a solution in the next two hours that saves me two minutes of work, then I'm gonna build it. Every time I create these videos where I showcase what I'm working on, I end up just recording my whole screen for hours on end. And then I go back through the gigabytes of video footage to crop out the parts that I want to include. And I thought to myself, instead of doing this manually, why don't I create a software program that will just automatically record the simulator and I can see the progress as I'm working on the project. A few moments later. I created a Mac OS app that detects when simulator is the active window and records it to the desktop. Automatically gives me archive footage of my development progress for upcoming videos. You can see the initial version in action here. No intervention from the user, you just set it up and it goes. This is incredible, release it. So useful for my regular job and a QA role. Release it, genius. This is great, are you going to release it? What have I done? This cool little app that I built for myself all of a sudden has a use case. But to release it, I need to build my first macOS app. I need to release it to the App Store and it needs to be fully working that lets me record not only the simulator, but any window. So I decided to build the app in SwiftUI because I know SwiftUI. I've been building iOS apps now for over a year in SwiftUI. I recently built an Apple TV app in SwiftUI and I thought to myself that the process for building a Mac OS app would be pretty much the same as building an iOS app. But little did I know, there was a roadblock. <laughs> Turns out Swift UI on Mac OS doesn't allow you to manipulate images in the same way using UI image. So all of my existing code that I've created for all of my apps have leveraged UI image in one way or another which means I can't just reuse the code that I've used previously for manipulating images and videos with ease. The solution, NS Image. UI Image platform is iOS, tvOS, and watchOS. The frame kit is UI kit. NS Image is used in Mac OS. The framework is app kit. UI Image is for iOS based platforms, while NS Image is for Mac OS platforms. Their APIs are different and the design patterns are different. So what this is telling me is all of the functionality I'm building for my video editing software that I'm building for iOS, when I do convert it over to Mac OS, which is a plan in the future, it means that I can't import the normal UI kit framework. I need to start working with app kit. So it's going to be a lengthy process converting that existing functionality to work on iOS and Mac OS. I haven't worked out a good solution to handle that yet. Perhaps if you've got some examples or recommendations, put them in the comments below because when I do come to tackling that issue, I'd like a head start. In the meantime, this app is specific to Mac OS and my other apps that are built are specific to iOS. And it's pretty straightforward to ask ChatGPT to convert the functionality that I've already built for manipulating UI images to NS image. Hey ChatGPT, convert this to NS image. So I've already got a prototype of the app that automatically records the simulator. To make this use case a bit more open-ended, so if you're doing QA or wanted to automatically record some other software program, then the first thing you wanna do is be able to change which images are loaded into the app to watch and record. I like the system settings interface as inspiration for this app, specifically the screen and system audio recording interface. There's a nice way to manage here which apps currently have permission for recording screen and system audio. And you can toggle it on and off very easily without removing it, or you can go ahead and just remove the, the app. So I wanted to replicate this functionality in my automatic screen recorder app. And there we go. We have version 1.0 with the ability to add apps. And we can select which apps we'd like to add that are already selected. We can toggle them on and off. Here's the auto screen recorder app in action. In this example, I've set it to automatically detect when chat GPT is present on the screen. 
And as you can see, when I open up ChatGPT, it automatically starts recording the contents of the window. It saves it straight to the desktop. We can open that video. Easy, simple, that's done. If you wanna check this out, go to the App Store. I'll be putting a link down below when it's approved by the App Store review team. It's free. I'm not charging for this one at this stage. This is just version 1.0 and I could add to it in the future if it gains some momentum. And with any version 1.0, it's just the bare basic minimum functionality that's required to be a functional product that serves the one purpose. And the one purpose is recording the window of your choice. In a future version, I can update it to change the location where videos will be saved. At the moment, it just saves it to the desktop. And then I can use the recommendation from Daniel to automatically frame in a more square or rectangular format with some background behind the simulator. It will be incredible for sharing on socials. So I've already got that functionality built in my Screen Riz app. So Screen Riz allows you to modify the background, select the transitions, all of that functionality. All I have to do is convert UI Image Framework, the UI Kit Framework, into App Kit, and all of that functionality should also work in this app. So that'll be a future version if this app has any merit and, and people find it useful. And even though this is a very small app that I thought only had one use case, it turns out that others can see potential in these small apps. And if, if it works for me, it's a reminder that it's probably gonna work for someone else. So spend the extra couple of hours polishing it up and releasing it, getting it onto the app store. And some of the smaller ideas that I've built have actually been the ideas that have generated the most revenue for me. One of my first apps that I built and sold was just a simple squat counter app. I didn't actually think it would have much use at all. All it was was just a timer, a tracker that you just say, I want to do 10 squats per day. And you just tick a box. You just press the little plus button every time you do a squat that day. Simple as that. It didn't have anything fancy like tracking you actually physically doing the squats. It was really a manual process of I've done a squat, tap, I've done a squat, Tap. And it turns out that this software, this app was recommended by personal trainers in the UK specifically. They would recommend it to their, their clients to track their squats during the week and then report on their progress at the end of the week. So it was a, like an accountability buddy so they could check to make sure that their clients were sort of keeping track of their progress and then seeing their progress over time. And that, that was the eye-opening experience to me, that you don't have to invent the next Facebook, the next Instagram. You don't have to invent the next big thing. All you have to do is just solve the little problem that you're having. In this case, I was just wanting to have a video editor that allowed me just to automate the process of recording the window that was currently in the foreground. And it turns out that that might actually be a problem that other people are having perhaps not the exact same use case. If I keep that on my hard drive, I will never know. But if I put it out there and I let you use it and I let anyone try it and play around with it, it could be a product that makes that generates revenue for me in the future. If not, at least it's a product that has helped someone somewhere do something somewhere. I'm lucky right now because the kids are at school my partner has taken the youngest ones out of the house and I had the whole opportunity of being able to live stream my entire process building this app. You can check it out in the description below. Don't forget to subscribe if you like this sort of content. I release two videos every week just documenting my journey, developing apps, building apps, selling apps, monetizing apps, everything about apps.